What's new in 3.4? I'm going to talk it about it from the point of view of administrators, uh, admin interface, course administration teachers, students and all regular users. We may not have time to do the mobile app. We'll see how it goes. Stop me when, it's, you know, when you've had enough. This is the screen of uh, what's new for administrators in the admin interface. If you want to take a picture, take a picture now, because then I'm going to move on quite quickly. And I'll deal with some, but not all of these. And when it's released, you know, videos and documentation will come out. So, first of all, that I think is interesting is to do with user tours, which are a great way of getting your teachers and your students into your Moodle site. And we've now got three new categories, three new filters. So if you go to set up a user tour as an admin, now, you, as well as being able to filter them by theme, boost, clean, whatever, and by role, you can also filter by category, by individual course, so you can really target it down, and by uh, course format as well. So I think that's going to make them a lot more useful. Now, site registration has been improved because we really want to get as many people registering as possible. The form is a lot clearer, okay? I know you can't see it on here. We also want to encourage you to, to sign up for our newsletter to get updates and to get security updates. We have a nice little reminder about the mobile app. And when you register, you'll only be able to connect to Moodle.net, which is our hub, not to other hubs. HTTPS, very important. Your sites should be on HTTPS. You used to be able to have login only uh, HTTPS, that's gone. And what is useful is that uh, if you have in your site HTTP embedded content, you know, sometimes it, we just won't display, it's blank, if your site is HTTPS and your content is HTTP. So we have a conversion tool, it was a plugin, it's now been brought into Moodle Core and in the admin page where that will do it for you. Here's my site where the process is about to begin. So I think that is going to encourage people to get onto HTTPS and that will be very useful for your admins. I'm going to leave that. Right, messages. Because we have improved messages uh, a lot in terms of, of looking good and you've got a little icon at the top, the messages block is going. Um, so that it's kind of like quaint and archaic and it's not needed anymore. So you won't see it whether your site is new or whether it's upgraded because you can use the other way we have of messaging with the little icons at the top. Uh, you can get it as a plugin if you want to, but you don't need it. And of course, we know a lot already. We've been introduced to this. Inspire Analytics is now in core. We had some training on it yesterday. Please give us your feedback on the wording, on, on the processes and so on, so we can make it even better. OK, that's the site administration. You notice I missed a couple out of Out for Speed. The next thing I'm going to talk about is course administration, so mainly what teachers do. Here's the list if you want to take a picture of the list. And I'm going to talk about all bar the first one, but I can tell you about that in your own time if you want. So as has already been mentioned, we've got a combined participants and enrollments page. So when you go into your course, uh, you will just have the one place, one stop shop where you can view participants, where you can enroll them, search for them, filter them and so on. Here it is larger, okay, and you can see for the start off that you've got the button top right to enroll them directly on that page. Over on the left, there's a filter, and you can filter them by group, you can filter them uh, by status, and if you look at the status column, uh, on the right, it's neat, attractive, with green, orange, and, and depending on their, their status, so different buttons, much more uh, attractive. What you can also do is you can bulk select, you see the boxes over on the left, and then with selected users, as well as being able to message them or add a note, which you could before, you can delete them, bulk select, delete, and you can edit them, edit the enrolments. Okay, now, 
activity navigation, this applies to students as well as teachers, but I've put it in the general course area. Uh, if you know the show only one section per course format, it's similar to this. So basically, to make it easier to move from one activity to the next, you're going to have at the bottom a link on the left, that's right, on the left to previous, and on the right to next. And then in the middle, you've got a jump down where you can simply choose where you want to go to. So from going from one activity to the next, it's going to be a lot easier, a lot smoother now. This one is one that's been asked. It makes sense. It's been requested for a while. It's now been done. So if you are a teacher, you can now mark activities complete on behalf of your students. Let's look at that. There's a new capability, which they have by default uh, override completion. And so if, as a teacher, you go into the reports activity completion, you can physically click on a box to mark an activity complete for your students. And if you see there, it's in red. OK, see, I've made someone happy. It's in red to show that the teacher did it, as opposed to the grey to show that the uh, learner did it themselves. This appears also for students. So that's the student view, and over there you can see what she sees, our student. Okay. Um, file types. Now, in recent versions, teachers have been able to specify what file they want their students to upload for assignments or for workshop. For instance, in an assignment, if you need them to upload a PDF, you just type .pdf and then they can only upload that. That's great, but for some non technical teachers, it's a bit difficult if they don't know the file extension or they write it wrong. So what happens now, when they go to specify that, and you also get it when you add media actually, is a lovely new list of suggested file types pops up and you just need to choose either the, the general type you want, which is like for instance document file, or you can expand it and choose specific files. Uh, PDFs, DOCX, ODT, whatever. So that makes the teacher's life much easier rather than physically typing them in themselves. And as a quick final one, and again this also applies to students, but if the admins enabled it, you can now tag database entries. In our last version, you could tag uh, forum posts and um, bo book chapters. Now you can tag database entries as well. And there's a quick screenshot of that. Students and teachers. OK, that's course administration. Uh, I'm going to look at all users now, and then you can tell me if, if that's enough. So biggest thing of all, as you know, is the Moodle Users Association funded calendar improvements. So let's look at those first of all. So you can add category events if, you, if you're allowed to, if you're the admin you can or with other capabilities. The way you add the events and edit them has been improved and you can drag and drop them. So over here you can see that as well as global events, course events, individual user events, you've got category events and there they are. And if, as someone who's adding an event, I think this is a, an admin adding a category event, it comes in a pop-up window now, and you can see category there. When you save it, uh, and you need to go back into it and edit it, again, it comes in a pop-up window, and when you edit it, the changes are automatically refreshed in, in the little calendars on the side. But if all you need to do is, uh, is change the date, you don't even have to click into it and do that because you can simply drag it and drop it to the correct uh, date, either in that month or in the next month. And that happens with activities, assignments uh, as well. And then the, the date is changed in the assignment too. Okay, now private files, this doesn't apply to admins because they can have as much as they want, but if you're a regular user, you have a limit which is set in the site policies. And uh, what's good now is that as a, as a student, for example, if you're uploading into your private files, you have an alert which tells you how much space you've learned, you've used, so you can figure out how much you've got left, and that is quite handy. If you've got global search enabled, there are two more things that, that uh, apply to global search. You can search into block content 
And you can search courses that you aren't enrolled in. I'll explain that. There's no security issues, don't worry. So here, a new search area, HTML block content. So here, the person is looking for the term logistics throughout their whole course. And although you can't see it very clearly, down at the bottom of the results, and there is an HTML block with the word logistics in it in one particular course called partnerships. Uh, and Courses that you're not enrolled in, but that are guest access, so you can see them anyway, or if they're guest access with a password, and you have the password, or if, they, or if you have that capability to view courses without being enrolled in them, then when you search, those will appear for you. But if it's a course you can't get in, then it won't appear. Okay, so that's at site admin, course admin, and all users. Do you want me to stop there? because I've done 11 minutes and six seconds, or to finish. Right, okay, 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 right. Mobile app. So the main thing uh, about the mobile app is, isn't actually in the mobile app just yet, and it's, it's, it's on the site, on the desktop. And that is, again, to encourage people to go and download the app. We're adding little reminders. So in the footer of your 3.4 site, there's a link, download the app, which you can change to the branded Moodle mobile app if you want. And as you can see here, this student, the app's enabled on the site, uh, and she's got a reminder in her profile, download the mobile app. She's just got to click on it, and then she gets this wonderful mobile app. And what can she do that's new? Well, she can now do workshop because from Moodle 3.4 when the mobile app comes out which is a couple of weeks after the site uh, the, the the main update so it's going to be end of November she'll be able to do a workshop and here is a student doing the workshop in the app and as has already been mentioned basically what that means is that all of that screen now is going to go green uh, because workshop will be enabled, standard activities students can do, 100% of, and so we can focus on the non-standard ones and encouraging people to make theirs uh, usable with the mobile. Couple of other things, um, PayPal, if, you want, if you're on the move and you see a, a course and you really want to do it and you want to sign up for it and pay for it, you can sign up via PayPal from the app. Uh, and there's more. I don't have any fancy screenshots for this because they're, they're not particularly lending themselves to it and they're still being worked on because we have, what, three more weeks or so till the app update comes out. But for your interest, uh, you can, if you forget your password, you can sort that out from the app. There was an issue with Vimeo videos. If, if they were restricted and you couldn't see them on the app, that's been sorted. And if you're one of these people with a lot of money so you can use iOS, Apple products, the, the file share, I, I don't have one, you see, the file sharing, the, the uploading through iOS was a bit tricky. That's been much improved as well, which is all of the mobile app, which is all of the things that I have to tell you that are new in Moodle 3.4, 13 minutes and 42 seconds. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. <laughs>